I had gotten so used to only seeing what was right in front of me, I lost all sight of anything in the distance. The reason I'm telling you that is maybe that's your diagnosis today. You can't see beyond what's directly in front of you. You're nearsighted. Hey, I'm Terry Savelle Foy, your cheerleader of dreams. Hey, I have something I wanna share with you that's absolutely free. It's a vision board checklist for you to download and I'll share you the details at the very end. But first I wanna talk about how to visualize your dream life. You know, people have teased me through the years and people who don't know me and they watch the podcast or something, they'll say, you sound like you're four years old. Well, one time I was uh, being picked up for a meeting in Austin, Texas, and this lady said to me, I know why you sound like a kid. I said, please tell me. <laughs> she said, because most of us stop dreaming when we were kids. And she said, you speak to the child in us to get your dreams back. I said, I like that, I'll take it. So my point is most of us have dreams as kids, but as we grow up, we're told, stop dreaming, be realistic, stop living in a fantasy, get a real job. Well, I want you to realize that your ability to visualize is a gift that God has given you to set the course for where he wants you to go. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger said, you need a very clear vision of where you wanna go in life. He said, you can have the best ship in the world, but if the captain doesn't know where to go, that ship will just drift around the world and not end up anywhere. He said, that's exactly the way it is in real life. If you don't have a goal or a vision, you just drift around and you're not going to be happy because you don't know what you're doing. Well, Jack Canfield said, the one sentence that fills the thoughts of people as they prepare to pass on, you know, right? Like on their deathbed, the, the sentence that just fills the lives of so many people is, if only, if only I'd done the things I really wanted to do, my life would be so different. Think about that. If only I had invested the money, 10% of my income every month. If only I had taken better care of my health. If only I'd written that book that was in my heart. Or if only I'd taken a chance and started my own business. See, the someday syndrome is a fatal trap. Someday, I'll do all the things I wanted to do. I usually say someday is not a day of the week. It doesn't go someday, Monday, Tuesday. Well, I want you to give yourself permission to succeed. You know, you could be the greatest enemy to your success by not using your imagination and visualizing your true dreams. So make a decision to do what God has put in your heart to do. Stop comparing yourself to what anyone in your family has or hasn't done. This is your life. What is God expecting of you? What do you need to accomplish? Well, see, in order to do this, you need to do what every successful person does. They visualize their dream life. See, you'll never leave where you are until you see where you'd rather be. Where do you see it? In your imagination. See, you have to see where you're headed in the future before you start taking steps towards in your present. You know, Bo Bennett said, visualization is daydreaming with a purpose. Well, just to give you a quick story real quick, years ago, my husband and I both had LASIK eye surgery in June of 2000, and it was the best money we've ever spent. But the day we had surgery, we were literally like the blind leading the blind. <laughs> With, and without context, both of us were legally blind. Well, it was in high school that I discovered just how bad my eyesight had become. I couldn't read the chalkboard in class unless I sat right up front. I could barely see the scoreboard at the football games and I was a cheerleader, so I'm like doing backflips for the wrong team. <laughs> I was hiding this from everybody. I didn't want my parents to know how bad my eyes were because I just did not want to wear glasses. Now keep in mind, glasses were not cool in 1985. So I will never forget one embarrassing day when I had to take the eye exam during my driver's ed class. Hundreds of new drivers were being tested, you know, in the school cafeteria, and I'm standing in the line just like panic stricken because I knew I was going to fail. Well, all of a sudden, I had this brilliant idea to help me pass. I'm standing there and I memorized every single letter that the girl in front of me said as she cited what she saw in this little machine. So she was like, LMZ, PTW. Now let's just pretend, because it's been like 30 years, so I'm just pretending that those are the letters. All of a sudden the teacher said, next. So I looked in the little machine, couldn't see a thing, but I confidently said, 
LMZ PTW. And I stood up straight with this big, you know, smile of assurance. The teacher's eyebrows kind of went together. She turned her head to the side in complete confusion, like, honey, are you okay? <laughs> I said, yes, ma'am. She said, could you do that again? So I looked in the little machine and I just went, LMZ PTW. And I said it again with, you know, great enthusiasm. She said, sweetheart, um, I think you need your eyes professionally checked. She said, you did not get a one of them right. What are you looking at? <laughs> Well, what I didn't realize is she switched the screen between each person, giving us a completely different list of letters to read. So she must have thought that I was nuts. Like I needed more of than my, just my eyes professionally checked. Like, you're crazy. Well, of course I failed the test. I had to go with my mom to see an optometrist. And I will never forget sitting in the chair, squinting, even just to see the first gigantic letter. And I was like, E? With this big question mark? The doctor instantly gave me the diagnosis and he said, I know what your problem is. He said, you're nearsighted. I said, no, I can't see far stuff. Like I can't even see you. He said, I know you're nearsighted. Well, then he began to explain that being nearsighted means you can only see what's near you. So he gave me some temporary contacts to wear home and I will never forget. My mom's driving me home and I was mesmerized just looking out the window. It was like this whole new world opened up to me. Now don't laugh, but I had no idea that you were supposed to actually see the leaves on the trees. I had gotten so used to just seeing this big green blur. I thought that was normal. I couldn't believe that you could actually read S-T-O-P. <laughs> on the stop sign. Like I just saw this big red octagon, you know, on the side of the road. I had gotten so used to only seeing what was right in front of me, I lost all sight of anything in the distance. The reason I'm telling you that is maybe that's your diagnosis today. You can't see beyond what's directly in front of you. You're nearsighted and you can't even see a glimpse of what's in your future. In fact, do you know, you can tell if someone's nearsighted by what they talk about. See, if all you talk about is how bad things are and they'll never change, you're nearsighted. If all you talk about is the good old days and you have nothing to look forward to, you're nearsighted. If all you talk about is other people and what they're doing with their lives while yours is just passing by, you're nearsighted. Well, see, if you want to go the next level, you have to see the next level. You have to become farsighted. You have to take your eyes off of what's directly in front of you and start getting a vision of where you want to go in the future. You know, I love what actress Suzanne Summer said. She said, I have used visualization as a tool for success for her career for years. She said, I see myself doing what it is I want to do, and I do not let go of this picture until it manifests. Well, let's pretend that you can have anything you want. It's five years from today. Go ahead and add up your age, visualize what you want, and start writing it down. Are you married? Do you have a baby? Are your kids in college? Are you working? If so, where? What do you look like? Do you have an image of what you want to look like physically? See yourself from head to toe. Are you fit, in shape, and feeling alive? What are you driving? What color is it? You know, what is your financial condition like? Are you saving money? How much have you saved five years from now? Like, what is the exact number? Are you satisfied with that? You know, where do you live? Is it the same house you're in right now? Have you moved? Are you living in a different city or state or even country? Where is it? Is it on the lake? Is it a large piece of property? Is it a condo in the city? You know, where have you been? Have you traveled? Think about things like, what have you accomplished? Did you finish that article and submit it for a local newspaper or magazine? Did you finish the accounting class at the local college? Did you start your cooking or catering business? Did you go to the Fashion Institute or learn how to create your own website? Can you speak a foreign language like French or Spanish? Or, you know, did you start a side job that's bringing in an extra 10,000 a year? You know, are you ministering? Are you teaching a class? Did you write your first book? Did you go on your first mission trip? Is your debt paid off? Now, the reason I'm asking you so many questions is that those are questions you need to ask yourself. What does your ideal life look like five years from right now? I'm telling you, five years from now, you could be living a completely different lifestyle, the life of your dreams. And it all begins by visualizing what you truly want. So no matter how big or how small the dream may seem, it's a dream. 
It's a goal and it's a vision and it's needed to keep you alive and living your life to the fullest. So close your eyes and visualize your dream life. I love Proverbs 23, 7. It says, as a man thinks in his heart, so shall he become. So I hope you've enjoyed this. And remember, I'm cheering you on to live your dreams. Now, our YouTube subscriber of the week is, let's see if I can pronounce it. It's an easy one. Erica Martinez. This is what Erica said. Since I started watching you, Terry, I've become more tidy and organized and accomplished several goals like getting my associate's degree. She said, the vision board keeps me on track. Thank you for the videos. I love that. I am such a believer in vision boards. And Erica, I am so proud of you and I'm cheering you on. You know, that's the thing. I want to share with you how to make your own vision board because I'm telling you from experience and from the testimonies of thousands, you are going to discover a way to stay motivated to go after your dreams in a fun, compelling way. And that's with vision boards. I have proof that they work. You know, more than anything, I want you to get a compelling vision and stay motivated throughout the year to go after it. All you gotta do to get this free download is click the link in the description, go to terry.com slash checklist to get my vision board checklist that will help you create your own vision board in a fun, easy way. And for more consistent motivation, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. Find my handles below or click the little red subscribe button for weekly videos to make this your best year yet. And don't forget, I'm cheering you on to live your dreams.